alors ce serait par rapport à la construction en fait, de cet univers. On sait qu'à la base, ça a adapté d'un comics Marvel, mais c'est surtout un produit Disney, par exemple Disney, donc avec un fond Disney. Et donc ma question c'est, est-ce que, en préparant ce film, on avait déjà en prévision un univers partagé, et voir peut-être un destructible dedans, par exemple, ou d'autres films D'accord. Alors, well, uh, this question about how you really constructed the whole universe, because obviously we knew from the beginning there would be the Marvel world, but also very much 100% Disney mood and tone. So how did you prepare to sort of mingle these two worlds? And how would you say there was an destructible? You wanted to say there were some other heroes yeah, within, overview, within the film itself. Well, from, from our first conversation uh, with Marvel, when uh, John picked Big Hero 6, and, and I pitched John Blaster six different uh, uh, Marvel <coughs> properties to, that I thought would be great to, to bring and make an animated film out of. And he picked Big Hero 6, mostly, I think, because for the emotional story that was there. Um, and so we talked to Marvel, and they said, you know what, that's great, but don't worry about setting it in our universe. They've already got their universe very worked out and especially the cinematic universe. Um, so they really encouraged us to take it and make it our own, create our own world. And that's what led to this mashup city of San Francisco. And we just really loved the idea of, this is a mashup of Disney Marvel, so the, the world could be a mashup of Eastern and Western. Um, and so we combined those two cities. So um, it, it really, you know, and, and there was a lot of commonality with Marvel movies and Disney films in that, you know, the Marvel films, Uh, even though they're maybe a little more action-oriented, they still have a lot of humor, and they still put a lot of work into character development. Um, and so, you know, I never viewed them as that different, to be honest with you. Uh, the only thing is, we, you know, we felt kind of empowered to indulge uh, our action uh, uh, fan, action movie fan, a little bit with this one. Yeah, our action, we're geeks, so we enjoy <laughs> We enjoy action. Yeah. So that was a little fun. Justement, puisque Marvel est un petit peu l'adoption du film qui est basculé chez Disney ensuite, est-ce que on peut déjà parler d'une licence Et la suite de ma question est naturelle. Le deuxième épisode, c'est pour quand Well, obviously, as we both Marvel and when we saw your film, obviously we, can, we cannot help thinking about franchise, the sequel. Can you tell us about it uh, You know, we never start with the idea of franchise. Um, I. Um, You know, we've not really talked about it. Uh, true. You know, and it's true. I mean, we, you know, I actually, I brought it up, but we decided not to talk about it. Um, the, um, you know, we, we're going to take a break. Uh, we've been on the road for two months now, opening the film around the world. Uh, and then we'll come back probably sometime uh, before summer, or just around summer, and start talking about what we do next, you know. Um, I've never been a big fan of sequels myself. I've always liked the original IP. This is the one film that I've worked on that I can see actually going back because I love the characters. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, uh, Tokyo is in the dans le comics original, but why have you chosen San Francisco? No. Well, obviously Tokyo is in the original, but yeah. why San Francisco? Well, you know, I, I wanted to pick a, a city that was very recognizable the world over, and it had a lot of sort of iconic pieces to it that if you applied that Japanese aesthetic over it, it would be familiar, but yet something new. And so San Francisco just kind of felt perfect because it's Golden Gate Bridge, cable cars, it's just very iconic. Um, plus it's in our backyard, so it was, it was uh, easy to go there. And, But it is, it is interesting, because I have many French friends, and I'll ask them, have you been to Los Angeles? And they'll say, no, but I've been to San Francisco. It's a, it's a city that's loved around the world. Yeah. And you lived there? Uh, yeah, I lived there for three years, yeah. It was a great, great Plus, great nobody place. wants to see an L.A. <laughs> <laughs> you you no, get enough on yeah, the detective no, stories. Nobody with, uh, wants to see that. <laughs> you get a lot of television with L.A. Next question. Alors, il y a beaucoup de références à la pop culture japonaise. Je veux savoir si tu es fan de manga, si oui, lesquels, et comment il les a intégrés toutes ces références dans le film Well, obviously, there's lots of reference to Japanese pop cultures. We're wondering if you were a fan of that culture of mangas, and how did you also integrate that within the structure of your film Yeah, I, I, I was a fan. Um, unfortunately, I didn't grow up with it. 
uh, I came to it later in life and when I was at college and studying animation. And that's where I was really exposed to anime and specifically Miyazaki. So, uh, and then I, you know, really immersed myself in it. Um, so, yeah, we were, we were all fans, and everybody who works at Disney, to a person, pretty much, is a fan of uh, anime. Um, but we didn't look at it specifically. We just let it, you know, it's part of us as filmmakers because we're, uh, you know, we were influenced by it. But we never looked at, at certain things and, and, um, and tried to specifically pull references. I mean, you know, Baymax uh, feels like an homage to Miyazaki, in a sense. And even the city of San Francisco, uh, in some of Miyazaki's films, he has that same kind of mashup feel where there's, you don't really know exactly where it takes place, you know, but there's like, you know, old European influences in it, and he's pulling from <coughs> places too, so it felt like it was very much in the spirit of sort of Miyazaki. Question. How do you adapt the animation in Marvel? What would you say were the challenges in adapting, in a way, the Marvel Universe into the Disney world? You know, I mean, it's interesting. Um, I, and I think we both feel that Marvel uh, approaches story very similarly to how we approach story. So there's a similarity there in terms of what the root and core of a story is in terms of the heart, because we all know that every great superhero story has a huge heart. Character is a huge element in uh, Marvel films, as it is in Disney films. I mean, character really is what drives story. Uh, so, you know, in terms, I, I found more commonality than I found differences. Mm -hmm. We had two, a gentleman, um, uh, Joe Casada, who is the chief creative officer of Marvel, and Jeff Loeb, who is the, an amazing writer and now in charge of television production in Los Angeles, they were on our story trust. So they came every three months when we would present the film in, in you know, the film maquette. And uh, we never talked about, you know, well, Marvel would do it this way. We never talked about it. We always talked about what the best story is. And I think that's how you have to approach everything. And, and one thing we should uh, uh, um, make clear, that, that it's not the Marvel Universe. No. It's our a, world. It's a Disney film. Yeah, I mean, and that was very early on. They encouraged us to take it and make it our own. They said, don't worry about setting this in the Marvel Universe. You know, they, they got enough going over there, you know, and you don't have to worry about Captain America or the Avengers, you know, trying to weave them into the story. They were excited for us to take it and almost just create this new universe. It's really an alternate reality if you, you know, to get really nerdy. But, um, <laughs> but it's not, it's essentially not the Marvel Universe. There is no, you know, uh, Captain America or anything like that in our version of San Francisco. Next question. Alors, moi, ma question, vous avez expliqué hier que l'animation avait pris huit mois. Par contre, la ville en elle-même, on avait vu déjà un sneak peek il y a quelques années, il y a deux ans, il me semble, au Comic Con. Donc, la ville en elle-même, elle avait déjà dû être faite ou commencer en amont. Donc, ma question, voilà, en fait, c'est comment est-ce que la production du film s'est déroulée, la conception de la ville d'une part, toute la construction de l'histoire enfin, autour, enfin, voilà, comment vous avez, comment la production du film s'est déroulée quoi. Uh, yeah, well, basically, you, you're explaining yesterday that animation itself took around eight months, but at uh, Comic-Con about two years ago, we already saw your city. So uh, the general would like to know, what was the process? How did you basically work to the film, the three and a half years you took there? Where did it start? How did you proceed to structure your film? Well, it started with uh, research, really, before we delved into the artwork. You know, we just did a lot of research into Tokyo, San Francisco, robotics, you know, just everything we could, you know, really get our hands on, we were researching. And then we started developing the world. And, and uh, that really came first, is, is developing the world. You know, we put a lot of work into art direction and, and concept design as far as the world. Which would be the test that you Yeah, saw. the test. That's why, that's why that was the first thing out, because the story was still... still um, and, and you know, you know, concurrently with that, we start working on the story. And the story really is where you spend the most of your time. Um, you know, we finished... We <coughs> we, did we really wrap story? I don't know. I guess we guessed we, we did. We wrapped story about two weeks before we wrapped animation. Yeah. And so, 
But by the way, we make stories. You know, we kind of iterate in story sketch and, and story reel, and, and parts of the movie start to take shape, and those are the ones that are put into production while we're working out the other stuff. So, um, but uh, we had done a lot of R&D prior to starting production. And, you know, in fact, we held back production until we could get the story really working. Uh, which, and, and the good thing is it gave us a lot of time to, like, do a lot of testing and R&D on the microbots, because that took a lot of work. Um, the, uh, a lot of R&D on the, the, the end of the movie, you know, with the, the fractal um, portals, the portal stuff, you know, that, that, that whole end of the movie took a lot of research. And a lot of animation research. We did, I mean, getting the characters moving and understanding right. their powers. I mean, I think, you know, we have to sometimes hold the reins on production until we know the story is right. And so on this particular one, we were wrestling with the story and uh, came, this past January is when we said, okay, this is, this is the, we, we can let 15 minutes into production. And then every three weeks after, we would put another 15 minutes into production. So. And then it, it, it evolves like that. We weren't fully in production, I want to say, till June. It may have been May. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. It was, a, it was a tricky. This is a tricky film. You know, it's complex. It's it's the story was really hard. And and but I mean, you know, I watched the movie and and, and it's it's very rich thematically. And and I'm glad that that's resonating with people. In fact, you know, we had people coming up to us last night after the. The screening, you know, telling us how much they appreciated the fact that it was um, so rich thematically, and, and that took a lot of work. So it's nice to see that it, people are um, enjoying that. One of the conscious decisions to make the majority of the main characters really smart sounds nerds. I missed that. Uh, sorry. Uh, what is a conscious decision uh, to make the majority of the main characters really smart sounds nerds? <laughs> oh, making nerds? Yes. Science uh, nerds. Science. Well, <laughs> there were nerds. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we based so, them on ourselves. We, you know, basically, we're we're hoping that nerds will inherit the earth. Uh, <laughs> that's kind of, uh, and I think it is true. I mean, I, I, we live in a time when I think nerds are respected. Okay. I mean, if you look at the world, uh, those people who are held in high esteem, you know, it's the Bill Gates, uh, the Elon Musk, the you know, it, it, it's, it's technology that's driving innovation in this world. Um, and I'm so proud of this film that it's about a, a group of really smart people. It celebrates intelligence, it celebrates being different, and it celebrates making things. And I know um, a, a great story, there was a, a woman who took her uh, 11-year-old daughter, 12-year-old daughter, to the film. And 20 minutes into the film, she leans over to her mother and says, I want to go to college. <laughs> I think that's great. I think that's great. Thank you. Real question. So you both come from traditional animation. Mm -hmm. uh, what, so what was the most challenging thing for you, especially done maybe yeah. in the drifting mm -hmm. part? with this three-dimensional project? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I kind of had to learn it a lot from scratch, right? I mean, because I had never worked on a CG movie. I was a storyboard artist. Yeah. Um, so, but we don't, you know, a lot of times, you know, in storyboard, you don't really see too much of the process down the pipeline. Uh, and of course, when you need to draw So, um, the biggest challenge to me was just getting my eye used to looking at CG animation. Because you got to get used to it first before you can, you can offer a, a critique. Um, and so it was getting past that first few tests and just being able to uh, train my eye to look for, you know, what what I was looking for essentially, you know. So um, it just like any medium, it just takes some getting used to. But uh, luckily, everybody knew that that I was a, a newbie, the crew, <laughs> and they were very experienced, and they held my hand and walked me gently through the whole process. Winnie the Pooh was okay. Yeah, <laughs> was, uh, like much like Christopher Robin takes Winnie the Pooh's hand, my uh, animation crew took my hand and walked me through this process. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Great image. <laughs> no question. Uh, oui, vous avez uh, plusieurs casquettes. Vous avez été animateur, scénariste, réalisateur. 
qu est qui, quel est le rôle qui vous plaît le plus et quel est le film qui vous a le plus marqué jusqu'à maintenant Well, I mean, you, you, you sort of have many hats. I mean, uh, animation, writing, design, all these. I mean, what what is the the part of animation that you like most, mm -hmm. and what are the animation films that struck you most so far? Well, it's tough to pick, uh, and, I, and I mean this. I'm not trying to be diplomatic, but it, it's tough to pick uh, um, sort of a favorite part of the process for me, um, because I mean, a story will always be my first love because I came from story. Um, but the one, the one part I really did find myself really enjoying uh, on this was animation. I really love dailies. I really love, look, I just look forward to dailies. And sometimes those could be, um, you know, like three or four hour meetings. Because we had 90 animators on this film. And so when we were in the heat of production, we, I, you know, I was in those meetings for a very long time. And, uh, but they were always really fun. And part of it is just the team. They were just so, they were just so fun to be around. And, and, and the other part of it is just the work was at such a high caliber that I always got excited to see what they were doing. So, like I said, my first love was story, but on this film, I really loved uh, working with the animators. And I think my favorite thing is to holler at people. <laughs> no, 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 no. We don't believe this. <laughs> no, I, you know, it's interesting, because I think the process, um, Uh, you know, I love story, and I love being in the story room and watching these guys create and helping uh, when I can. But uh, for me, it's about making communication happen. That, that's really the, 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 my major job: is making sure that I get these guys' vision on stage, on screen, rather, and that you do that by getting people communicating. And so, that if there's good communication happening on a show, people are happier. When people are happier, the work is better, and we were pretty happy on this one. Yeah, we were, and he brought you uh, for the overtime meals. Um, <laughs> Roy, uh, you know, because inevitably in a production we had a lot of overtime on this movie, um, and Roy made the decision uh, to feed everybody really well. I fed them. Everybody <laughs> ate very well on this movie, and so therefore well, there were less complaints. You know, the le the, the, the <laughs> least complaints are the best. Yes, exactly. And the second part of the question. Oh, the, was, my favorite animation. Yeah. Um, I love Dumbo and, and uh, Peter Pan. Um, I love the, just the heart of Dumbo uh, and its simplicity. And I just love the sort of adventure and wish fulfillment of Peter Pan. Well, you love. Pinocchio would be my mm -hmm. classic. Pinocchio is like the greatest. I think, yeah. and from a hand drawn standpoint, it's the most beautiful. It's stunning. Agreed. Uh, and then uh, I would say of recent. Uh, Disney Pixar, I, you know, it's hard to say, but I really love The Incredibles. And then I love Spirited Away by Miyazaki. Mm. That's, mm. to me, that's a, that's a masterpiece. So those are the films that really inspire me in animation. Dans les films que vous avez faits. And the films that you actually do. Oh, uh -huh. Uh -huh. You know, that's like asking me which child I like the most. <laughs> uh, you know, it's really, it's, it's difficult. I, I have to say, I will, I, you know, when I did Rapunzel, when I did Réponse, uh, I was so happy because I felt, you know, I, every film that I'd ever done, I, uh, before that, I had what I called cringe moments, where I'd be watching the film and I would suddenly go, mm. Mm. you know, just... Moments where I wish it could have been better, and with Red Pons, uh, I didn't have those. I had no cringe moments. And so I was very worried when I came onto this film, because I thought, well, you know, I've done, I'll, 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 I'll be cringing again, it'll be tough. I, I walk away with this film, and it's, I'm so proud, and I have no cringe moments, and I absolutely love the message that this film gives to the world. I, you know, it, it's, it's, Winnie the Pooh is always going to have a very special place in my heart because it was my first movie and uh, it was pure joy from beginning to end because, you know, essentially all the hard parts about making an animated film, we didn't have to deal with because it was, because we knew these characters. It was like, here you go, here's some, here's a bunch of really eccentric, fun, lovable characters. Here's this little ensemble and you know the world, so just go and have fun with it. So it was very freeing and fun. That said, uh, I, I feel like Big Hero 6 really will always be um, probably the, my, my favorite film because it, it so connects to 
who I was as a kid and actually to who I am as an adult. Um, it, it's sort of, you know, there's moments in the movie where I kind of step outside myself and watch it as, as my eight-year-old self. And I think this would be like Star Wars to me. You know, it would have been that transformative movie that, that would have uh, inspired me to, to want to get into storytelling. It's a great picture that I've seen of Dylan. <laughs> how old were you? Nine? I'm nine. Nine know. years old, and um, he's holding. Uh, it's a Marvel character, it's right? Hulk. It's Hulk. It's, it's the Hulk. He's holding the Hulk, and his it's Christmas, mouth. It's Christmas morning. It's Christmas morning, and his yeah. mouth is like. <laughs> he looks so joyous and looks so. Yeah. You know, happy that he's got this little, you know, yeah. this, this thing to play with, and it's the Hulk. Wearing my That's Hulk great. jammies with my new Hulk toy. That's great. So I mean, we yeah. don't, we don't, uh, we don't grow up. Well, thank you for sharing these moments and congrats on your Oscar nomination. Yeah. We'll all be like fingers crossed. Thank you, thank you guys. Thank